Hello, I'm Bob Norton, CEO of Airtight Management and creator of the CEO and Entrepreneur. This segment is on building your management team. We're going to talk about a proprietary tool that I created to help avoid the most common errors in hiring called the skill set matrix. You'll learn about the 20 skills required at any given stage of a company's development and eventually the 100 skills that will likely be needed to take a company from startup to a mature company. We're going to talk about organizational development and how you use that tool to plan both individual and overall staff development and coaching, how you use it in recruiting, and of course in coaching people, and learning leadership and control of your culture. So the agenda is to discuss the three key dimensions that need to be focused on when recruiting people. The review the classic hiring errors that many professional recruiters and venture capitalists and even experienced managers and CEOs often make, and how the school uh, skill set matrix rather prevents those mistakes from being made, and how to use this tool in planning long term for the development of your entire team. Always remember that hiring and coaching senior staff is usually 50%, sometimes more, of a CEO's job. And you cannot be successful in building a real company, and by that I mean a substantial company of 5, 10, 15, 20 million dollars, without building a team first as the foundation of that. Your results will be directly proportional to the quality of the team you can put in place. I have seen entrepreneurs be successful who are good at recruiting and maybe don't, aren't so strong at management on other skills, but if you can't be good at recruiting and getting the right people on, you have very little chance of being a successful uh, entrepreneur and growing a large company. So the first thing to remember and refresh your mind with is the stages of development of the typical life cycle of a company from startup to mature. Dimension number one that must be thought about, and this is one of the most common hiring errors there is, is how are a person's skills impacted or relevant to the stage of development of a company? We know full well that a VP of marketing at IBM is not the same job as the VP of marketing at a startup. One would have a fully developed team under them, maybe 20, 30, even 100 people potentially to draw upon. Whereas the VP of marketing at a startup is probably going to have to roll up their sleeves and do what would normally be three, four, five, or ten different types of jobs or skill sets. So you've really got to ask yourself this question, not just in the context of where someone is coming from now, but looking at their whole resume and understanding. One of the first things I do interviewing is always make sure I understand the size of the company uh, for each position they are in, and I make a note about that on the resume. The experiences are all going to be stage dependent. No one would think, as I said, that a launch plan for a new product of a startup is going to look anything like a Fortune 1000 launch plan or even a launch plan for a mid sized company that you know was adding a product or, or, or doing, doing a new addition to a product line. Why people see this or don't see this, I really don't know. It's very frustrating. And you have to pay very close attention to the type of experience they got because it will really be normalized by the title. And of course, startups like to give away big titles to people who aren't quite as experienced as one of the things to draw them to have on their resume. So let's look at job scope in the, based on the size of the company. In a startup, one person could potentially have six to nine different jobs. Now, everyone knows this because we call it wearing many hats, right? But what they don't know is how do you test for and make sure that someone is going to be able to stretch themselves. I find that people can't stretch more than two levels of stages when they're coming from one company to another, and uh, it's, a, it's a very common problem that's repeated a lot. 
So looking at the stage of, if you're hiring for a startup, you want people who got their experience at stage one and two companies, maybe a stage three company, but hopefully not only a stage three company, so they know how to work in a smaller environment. Now, we all know this, it's wearing many hats, but you've got to think of it during the hiring process and make sure you understand what that person is really bringing to the table behind the title and the job description. Back in the internet bubble, which happened from about 95 through 2000, it was very common to see this hiring mistake. Professional venture capitalists would try to recruit people that were successful at large companies and put them into small companies as CEOs. So they might take a VP of sales that was successful at Sun Microsystems, for instance, and had a huge run up, right place, right time, and, and a good product. But it's not proof that they have the management skills and the understanding of running a startup. So they'd pip typically place someone and they'd be a fish out of water where the culture was so different and the support they had was so different and the fact that they had to do those nine other jobs that normally they had someone else to do made them very ineffective. So it, it's, it's like trying to make a baby in one month with nine women. It really can't be done. The birth of a startup is an organic process and it has to be done with iteration and learning to allow for pivoting and interacting with customers and rapidly adjusting the product. And so you can't just throw money at a problem and solve it or throw people at a problem and solve it. And oftentimes people who are used to being in big Fortune 1000 companies or environments like that, you know, are used to making decisions and then everyone else has to implement and execute whatever that decision is. And so they're often not as savvy in understanding what it takes to get it done because they're used to throwing money at the problem. So they're essentially fish out of water. They don't necessarily understand how to run a stage one company. Now, if someone spent some time in a startup, preferably two, three, four years, preferably a successful one, but you know, you learn a lot in an unsuccessful one too, and they have that on their resume, then that's fine. So I'm talking about people who are exclusively coming from one culture. And this is just a, such a common ignored problem that, that can't be ignored. So let's talk about other common mistakes in hiring. So we've talked about really thinking about that stage uh, of development. Having no standard model of development like the one you've, you've learned about from the boot camp is critical because you don't have a language, you don't have a model to look at what stage was their company at. So you've got to take that filter and that model and overlay it on the candidate's experience and resume. Second, generally people will have culture shock uh, because they're, they're used to having all this support. And by support, I mean an HR department, people to take out the trash, etc. I like to say when I interview people at a startup, and test them by saying, you know, you realize you're going to have to take out your own trash and you're going to have to do this and that and the other thing, which they normally might not used to be doing. And they've got to be nodding their head saying, yeah, I'm willing to do that. Because if they're a prima donna that says, oh, that's not my job, man, then you're in big trouble because they're going to wait for someone else to do it. And a startup can't wait. Waiting is deadly in a startup. And even professional recruiters often make this mistake. They often don't have line management experience themselves. They tend to be more salespeople and more diligent people that are resume matching keywords and, and maybe even by filtering people by keywords. So they're not going to have the understanding of really understand what it takes for someone to fit in an organization. That, that's a skill that requires experience and it's art and it takes a long time to deliver.